SLT Pari Bokke Kunam Obe Hitwati Kute SLT Nama Sabadata Vaksiya Da Panaha Ka Vatta Mak Sahitwa Labadi Obe Bin Patra Trupiyal Haida Hasak Bakwa Vatta Mak Himi Karagan In your headlines tonight, corruption must end. President Gotabe Rajapaksa warns officials found guilty of bribery will be banned from public service. Swiss reminder, Swiss embassy in a diplomatic note calls for a return to normal relations, hints at government's responsibility to protect diplomatic missions and its employees. More arrests. Former State Pharmaceuticals Corporation Chairman arrested over white van claims and remanded until the 6th of January. Rice Price State Minister responds to opposition MPs claims of bad rice on sale at Economic Centre. All this and much more coming up tonight on 1st at 9, this Tuesday the 31st of December 2019. From other Verona. This is Other There and Now First at Nine. PC Nicking Cut Winner. Anti Jer Mouthwash Summering and a Close Up Gel Lecker. Story Eka Start Karana. Hi. Hi. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. With just a few hours to go before we bid goodbye to year 2019 and welcome the dawn of a brand new year, a brand new decade, a brand new year 2020. We welcome you all to the final edition of the broadcast of First at Nine, your English news service of other than a 24 for 2019. We begin your uh, local news first. President Gotabe Rajapaksa calls for the end of inefficiency in public service during his tenure while stressing that public servants involved in fraud and corruption will be punished irrespective of their status. During a meeting at the Presidential Secretariat today, the President had advised the Intelligence Services and Criminal Investigations Department to look into alleged irregularities and corruption in state institutions. RMVA ke inna hari or customs ala inna hari ID card ke inna hari minhe pagawa ganne wana. E ganne e ata jiwat tenne bahayi ke nama te meka ganne na tuwa padiye wedi karan da puluang. Hebe padiye wedi karan na nang raja ada yang wedi karan da puluang. Mi raja ada yang gain sesra walata pahasukam den don. E tora sesra da pahasukam den net nama te raja seva kea. E tora meha meka kama depend wene raja seva kea ke awang ka kama saha kriya shili bawe ma. Tenne hari ta wedi wenne tang mi Kau mungkin ada agen yang ada no. Raja sebab kerana strike kerana do ni naya. Apa itu raja ada yang berdi kerana ni ada udah kerana mana. Godak kaya balap urut tu ena dewal tino. Dan magi kali atur itu mampu balan ni amat awam ini mewa mata hadal deh. Apa ini teka pahasu atau goda niiti ri itu agen. Awasar ganda itu agen. Ini kami kerana winne. Ada minyak control kerana. Minyak control kerana agi ane. Apa raja ada yang lebi ini. Apa apa walak kerana. Mewa apa hari kesu. Raja sebab itu awas. Diwedi kiri mahu, pasu kamla badi mahu, hamai kak mah keran itu puluang ini, me minisungge ada yang mewedi kerut pamanai. Ini mana tadi tinggal api, oh ya rataking hamad ada, iwayak pun naya ni, naya aragan, naya aragan, naya aragan, ekta ni kadi kada hati no. Me ke ini taramat, tanah kita villa ni dah. Me kani sa, api kotaning hari api patang gando. Patang gatte itu tamat tamai raja sewe. Api rata ayojane keran, api dadu gani naya kuat dina. Ini mana tang, api treasury bond jala ayojane keran, me ay balan ni, me raja sewe. कार्यक्षम है देखिए ला मटक वो हमारी में के बिना कंपोन्ड में निशुंग आला ला देने के ला पिटा आया या तुले आया योग कम जो आप पिटा आएगे मांगिता ने आराम बकल लती है ने जेल सीन एक्शन एंटी जर माउथ वॉश समेंगे एन ए क्लोज अप जेल लेकर स्टोरी का स्टार्ट कराना Following the granting of bail to the Swiss embassy abduction suspect Garnier Francis yesterday, the embassy of Switzerland in Colombo has communicated a diplomatic note to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs today. The note calls for a return to normal relations between Sri Lanka and Switzerland following the incident which it states was marred by misunderstandings while reminding the government of Sri Lanka of its responsibility to protect diplomatic missions of 
of other states on its territory. The Swiss Embassy communicated a diplomatic note to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs today. While highlighting excellent relations between the two countries and cooperation in a variety of fields, the note claims that the abduction saga involving a local staff member had marred the relationship with misunderstandings rife due to the issue. The note, however, also blames uncorroborated facts that made it into the public domain, putting an unnecessary strain on the otherwise cordial relationship between the two countries. The embassy also states that at no point during this time did Switzerland have the intention of tarnishing the image of the government of Sri Lanka. Further, the note says that the embassy regrets that developments following the alleged incident had led to Sri Lanka's commitment to due process being called into question and that Switzerland stands committed to the upholding of good governance and the rule of law. It added that the embassy hopes for a swift return to an environment conducive to the resumption of positive cooperation between the two countries. The note also adds that recognizing that local staff are subject to local laws, the embassy believes that both sides will remain attentive to the working conditions and the well-being of all staff of diplomatic missions. It also reminds the Sri Lankan government of its responsibility to protect diplomatic missions of other states on its territory. Now, in the latest development in the White Van press conference claims involving former Health Minister Dr. Rajat Sena Ratna, the former chairman of the State Pharmaceuticals Corporation, Rumi Mohammed, surrendered to the Criminal Investigations Department this morning, where he was subsequently placed under arrest. This came after the former SPC head was reported to have been absconding following an overseas travel ban being imposed on him as investigations sought to record a statement regarding the controversial media briefing. Former Chairman of State Pharmaceuticals Corporation Rumi Mohammed surrendered to the Criminal Investigation Department this morning and was recorded a six-hour statement, the Coordinating Officer of the Attorney General said. In the meantime, former Health Minister Rajita Senaratna, who was previously remanded in connection to the incident but was granted bail yesterday, continues to be under treatment at a private hospital in Nara Himpito. The Criminal Investigations Department had informed court that the former chairman was missing from his home, with family members denying knowledge of his whereabouts. The CID also revealed that the ex-SPC head had left behind both his personal mobile and vehicle at the time, according to his family. Investigators had sought both an overseas travel ban and an arrest warrant after revealing to court that they intended to name him as a suspect in the White Ban press conference case. The court, however, had rejected the department's request for an arrest warrant, citing the lack of specific charges, but granted the travel ban based on submissions. Deputy Solicitor General Dilipa Pires told court that evidence has revealed that the controversial press conference held prior to the presidential elections had been organized by former Minister Rajita Sena Ratna, who had agreed to payment of 2 million rupees to the two suspects currently in custody, who claimed to have been involved in white van abductions during the government of former President Mahinda Rajapaksa. Additionally, counsel Pires told court although the suspect had recorded a statement, it was evident that he was being uncooperative with the investigations and requested that the suspect be remanded. The defence counsel Anura Seneviratna informed court that the charges against his client are bailable offences and with the chief suspect former minister Rajita Senaratna having been granted bail yesterday, requested the court to grant bail to his client as well. Deputy Solicitor General Dilip Apiris then informed court that the release of the suspect on bail could interfere with ongoing investigations. Following this, Colombo Additional Magistrate Shalini Pereira ordered the suspect to be remanded till the 6th of January. Following an inspection of the Narahampita Economic Centre by opposition MPs, officials of the Consumer Affairs Authority paid a visit to the Narahampita Economic Centre today in order to investigate these claims. The officials collected samples of rice from retailers and planned to carry out analysis to determine the actual standard of rice on sale. A group of opposition MPs visited the Narahampita Economic Centre yesterday and made allegations with regards to rice varieties that the government subjected to price controls. However, the retailers at the centre denied the MPs' allegations that the rice was unfit for human consumption. Following this, officials of Consumer Affairs Authority paid a visit to the Narahampita Economic Centre today to verify these claims. 
ගුල්ලො ඉන්නවා නම් පණු කැදලි තියෙනවා නම් හාල් කැඩිලා දිරලා වගේ ගිහිලා නම් ඒවා ඇත්තටම අපිට ඇස් දෙකෙන්ම බල්ලා කියන්න පුළුවන් මේවා මිනිස් පරිභෝජනයට නුසුදුසු කියලා. නමුත් ප්‍රමිතීන්ට අනුව විශ්ලේෂණය කරලා තමයි කියන්න පුළුවන් ඒක මිනිස් පරිභෝජනයට සුදුසුද නැද්ද කියලා. ඒ ප්‍රමිතීන් වල තියෙනවා තෙතමන ප්‍රතිශතය බලන්න ඕනේ. කැඩුණු ප්‍රතිශතය ආගන්තුක ද්‍රව්‍ය මුකුත් තියෙන්න බෑ, වී යට තියෙන්න බෑ. ඒ වගේ ඒ කරාමිතින් කීපයක් තියෙනවා. ඊට අමතරව ශුද්ධ ජීවීන් වගේ දේවල් අන්න සුදුසු තත්ත්වයේ තියෙනවද කියලා විශ්ලේෂණය ृथ्वी <laughs> අපි බැලුවා එක්සත් ජාතික පක්ෂයේ මන්ත්‍රීවරුන්ගේ ප්‍රකාශ ආර්ථික මධ්‍යස්ථානයට ගිහිල්ලා හාල් ගැන කතා කරනවා. දැන් ඒ හාල් වල මිල පාලනය කරපු නිසා අනුවටට විකුණනම මේ මන්ත්‍රීවරු ගිහිල්ලා කියනවා මේ අනුවටේ හාල්ද මේ විකුණන්නේ මේ මේවා කන්න පුළුවන්ද කියලා. දැන් විකුණන වෙළඳුම් කියනවා මේ හොඳ හාල් විකුණන්නේ පේන්නේ නැද්ද කියලා. එතකොට මේකෙන් වෙළඳු දැන් ඊයේ හවස්වෙනකොට වෙළඳ කිව්ව අපේ වෙළඳාවට මේක හානියක් කරලා තියෙනවා කියලා. අනුවටට දෙන්න හොඳ හාල්. ඒ හාල් नरक हाल हेट जनता वर्त मे मिनी पारिभोजन नुसुसुना काम जनता मंत्री गबड़ा परीक्षण पात्र मे लक्ष गाना मेट्रिकोन गाना मे कैथुले नवा मे गिना दिदास दाहते गिना पुहा दिदास दाहते गिना पुहा विंदपोल्ट निकुत नौकरे निकुत नौकरे बिटराटिंग गिना एक बेदरिया लंका विहाल बेरद पोट दम मीन मेक तम खार मेक मेक क्रियात्मक तमंगे पौजलिक वास Let's draw some inspiration from students who sat the recently concluded uh, advanced level examinations after this break. Now as we near the end of 2019 we bring you some inspirational and remarkable stories of students who went against all odds to become top performers at the GCE advanced level examination this year some of these students withstood and overcame some of the harshest circumstances in life proving that odds can be defied with just a little bit of determination Ravi Chandran Yalini a student of the Pudukudi Rippu Central College claimed the best results in the Mulethiva district in the commerce stream Yalini's father a former LTTE cadre who is among the many still considered missing in action following the decades long conflict Yalini's mother was a victim of a bomb explosion where she lost her right hand Despite these challenges Yalini still found the focus to achieve her targets proving that impossible is simply a mere word கடந்த யுத்தத்தின் காரணமாக எனது தந்தை காணாமல் போயிருந்தார் அதே போல் எனது அம்மாவிற்கு வேலை செய்யும் துண்டிக்கப்பட்டது அந்நிலையிலும் அம்மா கஷ்டப்பட்டு என்னை இவ்வளவு தூரம் படிக்க வைத்து மாவட்டத்தில் முதல்நிலை பெறுவதற்கு காரணமாக அமைந்துள்ளார் அதே போன்று பாடசாலை சமூகத்தினருக்கும் பாடசாலை அதிபர் பாடசாலை ஆசிரியர்கள் மற்றும் அனைவருக்கும் நன்றியை கூறுவதோடு எனது எதிர்கால இலக்கு ஒரு கணக்காளராக பெறுவது Subramaniam Sudarnila also a student of the Pudukudu Rippu Central College in Mulethivu who was ranked first in the district in the art stream did not have it easy as well Sudarnila lost her father in the 30 year war and was looked after by her elder brother who is a mason by profession money and facilities have always proven to be a stumbling block in her journey கடந்த யுத்தத்தின் காரணமாக என்னுடைய தந்தை இறந்து இறந்து விட்டார் இருந்த போதிலும் என்னுடைய தாயார் மிகவும் கஷ்டப்பட்டு என்னை படிக்க வைத்து முல்லைத்தீவு மாவட்டத்தில் கலைத்துறையில் முதல்நிலை பெறுவதற்கு உறுதுணையாக அமைந்தார் அது மாத்திரமில்லாமல் என்னுடைய பாடசாலை அதிபர் ஆசிரியர்கள் மற்றும் தனியார் கல்வி நிறுவன ஆசிரியர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் இந்த நேரத்தில் நன்றியை கூறுகின்ற என்னுடைய எதிர்கால இலட்சியம் நான் ஒரு லோயர் ஆகிறோம் திஸ் இஸ் மீராஷா ஃபாத்திமா முஷாதிகா ரெசிடென்ட் ஆஃப் ஷாஃபி நகர் இன் முத்தூர் 
Fatima, a student of Zahira College, Trincomalee, became district top in the biology stream at the A-level examination this year. Her father works in a brick factory and supplied bricks to build houses in the area. We witnessed the dilapidated condition of the house, which Fatima calls home. With many difficulties in her life, Fatima's achievement teaches us that no poverty can hinder education. Subodha Srimali Jayavardhana, a resident of Parakrama Samudra in Polonarva, obtained straight A's in the art stream. Her result at the GCE A-level examination stands out due to her being a visually impaired student. Her achievement proves that physical disabilities can never be an obstruction. Two students of St. Anthony's College Candy also led by example by enjoying success in both academia and sports. What makes this achievement special is the ability to get this result together with my sport activities. In 2019, I captained the college under-19 cricket team and I was a member of the first 15 rugby team too. So since childhood, all I had in mind was sports and studies. I would like to thank my parents who have been there through the canteen. I would like to thank the college administration, Reverend Father Principal and the whole staff. I am extremely thankful for my school and for all the individuals that supported me throughout this journey to achieve what I have achieved right now, especially my parents, the Reverend Father Principal. They supported me to a great extent to achieve this goal. This journey was not that easy as it seems. It would be just a pipe dream if they were not here with me to support me and guide me through this whole journey. In another incredible instance from Ambilipitia, we bring you the story of a student who seems to have achieved more than he was expected to. Indupa Arunod Samra Singha, a student of the Ambilipitiya President's College, who completed his ordinary level examination just last year, achieving 9 A's, but couldn't wait another three years to complete his advanced level examination. Sitting for the A-level examination this year, Indupa passed with straight A's in the commerce stream. Taking you to business news, the Colombo International Container Terminal um, recorded a high uh, outcome this year. Uh, before we bring that story, I'd like to say that South Asia is first and only deep water terminal equipped to handle the world's largest vessels, uh, that is Colombo International Com Container Terminal, uh, reported an 8.6% growth in its container handling capacity for the year, amounting to a total of 2.9 million 20-foot um, terminal units. The company is subsidiary of China Merchant Port Holdings that manages the Colombo South Terminal said that this represents a fourfold or 322% growth over the past five years. The terminal handles 40% of the Port of Colombo's total tonnage and this increase has reportedly helped the Port of Colombo increase its total throughput by 2.6% in year 2019 despite the slow growth of maritime transport in the region. Announcing the year's final volume, CICT said ultra-large container carriers of a size that only CICT is capable of handling had contributed approximately 72% of the volume the terminal achieved for the year 2019. CICT was judged the best container terminal in Asia in the under 4 million TEUs category at the Asian Freight Logistics and Supply Chain Awards for the third consecutive year in year 2019. Now in its last four full years of operation, Colombo International Container Terminal has brought some of the largest vessels helping um, the country also applying the Asia's uh, Asia Europe routes to Colombo.
Taking you to international business, former Nissan head Carlos Ghosn, who faced several charges in Japanese courts, has fled Japan to Lebanon to escape prosecution. Now, his methods of escape has baffled Japanese prosecutors as his passports still remain in the custody of Japan's courts. Ghosn claims that he escaped prosecution in what he termed a rigged judicial system that is carrying out a, a personal vendetta against him. Ousted Nissan boss Carlos Gozen confirmed he fled to Lebanon yesterday, saying he won't be held hostage by a rigged justice system and raising questions about how one of the world's most recognized executives escaped Japan months before his trial. It was not immediately clear how Gozen, who holds French, Brazilian and Lebanese citizenship, was able to orchestrate his departure from Japan given that he had been under strict surveillance by authorities while out on bail and had surrendered his passports. Japanese immigration authorities had no record of Gosen leaving the country, Japanese public broadcaster said. A person resembling Gosen entered Beirut International Airport under a different name after flying in a board a private jet. His lawyers were still in possession of his three passports, one of his lawyers told reporters in comments broadcast live on Japanese TV. Gosen was arrested shortly after his private jet touched down at the Tokyo airport in November last year. He faces four charges which he denies, including hiding income and enriching himself through payments to dealerships in the Middle East. Nissan Motors sacked Gozen, saying its internal investigations revealed misconduct, ranging from understating his salary, but he was its chief executive, and transferring five million US dollars of Nissan funds to an account in which he had an interest. Gozen's lawyers have asked the court to dismiss all charges against him, where they accused prosecutors of colluding with government officials and Nissan executives to oust him to block any takeover of the automaker by French alliance partner Renault, of which Gozen is also chairman. After his arrest, Gozen spent a long period in detention, but most recently was allowed out, subject to stringent bail conditions, which required him to stay in Japan. And here uh, in the Colombo Stock Exchange, equities gained 0.44% at market close today, ending a four-day rally which uh, uh, closed to 2019 on a high. The All Share Price Index closed 26.79 points down at 6,129.21, with banking and finance stocks dragging down the market. The ASPI fell through the day to reach a daily low of 6,123 in the last half an hour of trade before recovering six points. Meanwhile, the more liquid S&P SL20 index closed 16.60 at 2,941.67. Turnover was 965.4 million rupees, while 61 stocks gained and 93 fell. Here's a brief look at how markets performed today. Ending the year on a positive note, the secondary market witnessed buying interest while the yield curve shifted downwards. In the equity market, the bows ended in red on the price losses made in CLC and Sampak. The benchmark all share price index had a downward trend throughout the day and reached intraday low of 6,123 prior to closing at 6,129, losing 27 points. Parcel trades were seen in HMB, 600,000 shares at Rs. 174, and Softlogic Holdings amounted 3.2 million shares at Rs. 1670. LLC and Brown Investments contributed 50% of the day's turnover. And the local currency, the Sri Lankan rupee, closed stronger at 181 rupees and 30 to 40 cents against the US dollar in the spot market today. While gilt yields east, uh, according to dealers, the rupee closed at 181 rupees and 45 to 55 cents against the greenback uh, on Friday. Here's a look at how the rupee traded against other major currencies of the day. Bushfires in Australia continue and in Sudan, 29 of its intelligence service are sentenced to death. Details after this break.
thousands of tourists and residents in an Australian seaside town sought refuge in boats, hunkered down in public buildings for or waded into water at the seafront today as wailing emergency sirens warned of a looming fierce Firefront. With the coastal town of Malekuta ringed by wildfires and the main road in and out of towns cut off, residents and holidaymakers were forced to head to the local gymnasium or waterfront as embers swept through the town. The fires are part of several burning across Victoria's uh, Victoria State's East uh, Gippsland region an area encompassing two national parks, lakes and coastal plains. Reports state that the sirens went out at around 8 a.m. local time yesterday and some of the affected were staying on boats until the fire eased. A Sudanese court sentenced 29 members of its intelligence service to death, hanging yesterday over the killing of a teacher in detention in the February of this year during protests that led to the overthrow of former President Omar al-Bashir. The group that spearheaded the protests welcomed the ruling, the first to deliver sentences over crackdowns on demonstrations in the months before and after Bashir was toppled in April. Prosecuting members of the intelligence services is seen as a test of how far Sudan's transnational government will go to erase Bashar's legacy and challenge the security apparatus. Thirteen defendants were sentenced to prison terms and a further four were acquitted in the ruling, which could face several stages of appeal. Now, 2019 has seen considerable changes in Sri Lanka, with the country forced to endure many challenges. With only a few hours left for the dawn of the brand new year, brand new decade, as I said, we now take a quick recount of the special events that the year passed by. On the 1st of January, owner of Perpetual Treasuries Limited, Arjun Aloysius, and its CEO Kasun Palisena were granted bail. On the 27th of March, notorious drug kingpin Mark Andure Madush and singer Nadimal Pereira, taken into custody in Dubai, were deported to Sri Lanka. On the 21st of April, a festive Easter Sunday turned into an unforgettable nightmare woven into the tapestry of Sri Lankan history. A spate of suicide bombings were carried out at three churches and high-end hotels, claiming the lives of over 260 people and injuring around 500. On the 2nd of July, Inspector General of Police Pujit Jaisundara, who was sent on compulsory leave, was arrested by the CID on charges pertaining to the Easter spate of terror. The 11th of August, Leader of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna Mahinda Rajapaksa named Gotabe Rajapaksa the party's presidential candidate. On the 2nd of September, Sri Lankan physician, academic and political activist Professor Carlo Fonseca passed away. On the 23rd of September, the Colombo Chief Magistrate Court acquitted President Gotabe Rajapaksa and seven others in the avant-garde case. On the 27th of September, seven pregnant cow elephants died mysteriously in the reserves Habarana, Hiriwadunna and Kumbi Kulama. On the 4th of October, the Court of Appeal dismissed the writ petition filed seeking an interim order restraining presidential candidate Gotabe Rajapaksa from holding Sri Lankan citizenship. On the 16th of November, Gotabe Rajapaksa recorded an astounding victory in the presidential election with over 6.9 million votes. On the 16th of December, Local staffer of the Swiss Embassy in Colombo, Garnier Barista Francis, who alleged that she was abducted and intimidated, was remanded by the Colombo Chief Magistrate. On the 18th of December, 
Former Minister Partali Champika Ranavaka was arrested by the Colombo Crimes Division for charges relating to a near-fatal hit-and-run traffic accident in 2016 and was subsequently remanded until the 24th of December after being produced in court. On the 26th of December, people in Sri Lanka were treated to an annual solar eclipse, a rare natural phenomenon which will only come around in another 12 years. December 27th, former Minister Dr. Rajita Sena Ratna was arrested while being treated at a private hospital and was remanded until yesterday but was later granted bail. Well, with the anticipation and excitement of a brand new year, the dawn is around the corner. I wish you all the very best with a promise to see you tomorrow at the same time, same place. Good night.